Nangam, so good evening. How are you? Good evening, Sepati. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm great, man. So lovely meeting you at long last. I know. Lovely meeting you too. And thank you for this opportunity. My goodness. You are more than welcome. You really are more than welcome. And on that note, I want to congratulate you on being uh, one of the 32 finalists for the inaugural Southern African Women in Leadership Awards. I am really honored to have such a trailblazer as yourself amongst these 32 phenomenal trailblazers that we're honoring this year. So now I'm so for the purpose of this interview, this is my colleague and co-pilot, Dr. Andy Braff from the Braff Leadership Institute. He will be doing the majority of the interview, the serious part. My job is <laughs> to welcome you and, and really say that I'm, you know, I congratulate you that, uh, that um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite honored myself because you are one of the trail business that I've followed for almost two years now, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I do yeah. see the work that you do. I am exceptionally proud of you. And yeah, so before we hand over to Andy, what would you tell the viewers about Nangam? So who is she and why is she here? What earned her a seat at this table? I consider myself an investment banker. I'm a qualified chartered banker. However, I consider myself an investor activists, particularly for sustainable development. I'm very passionate about development, for especially for the African continent. And my biggest passion is in the transport space. I am a big believer in how women-centric transport can open up opportunities for women and fast track the development of the economy as a whole. So, I grew up in Port Elizabeth. I moved to Gauteng in 2005. I studied my background is um, management accounting. I studied becoming management accounting. And then I majored in, as I, as I advanced with my studies, I majored in financial management. And then I got passionate about banking. That's when I then pursued a chartered banker qualification, which I recently qualified about two years ago. Then that also drew a lot of attention because we don't have a lot of chartered bankers in the country. And it, it, it drew a lot of attention from people in trying to understand what is it about the career that I've chosen. And the, the interesting thing about the career that I've chosen is that I want to use banking for the advancement of the general population. Whereas one would look for opportunities and career growth opportunities in a banking environment, in a traditional banking environment, whereas I would like to apply that in a more developmental area. So my, my biggest vision is to transform the transport industry and make it a women-centric transport industry. And what do I mean by that? There's three things that I focus on when I think about those. I think about a 16 year old girl who doesn't, who has a vision, but who does not have the transport system that moves her along towards her goals when, when as she moves, navigates her very active career path between 16 and 36. And this is purely because how the transport is designed, it's not, it, it's not accommodating the needs and the, the travel patterns of women. Safety issues, accessibility issues are big, are big issues for women. And this then, in my view, it does hinder an impact on the career choices or job choices that women make on the basis of their ability to access those. And physical access is what I'm, I'm talking about. We all have opportunities, but for us to actually physically be able to take that job, it requires that you have, you are able to move from one point to the next point. So those are the things that I have to, that, that drive my passion with the work that I do at the Development Bank of Southern Africa. I say to myself, what is it that I contribute towards in making sure that we build an inclusive economy? It's one thing to give women access or women opportunities in leadership give women opportunities in ownership of companies, but it's another thing to transform the actual economy and make sure that the general public is included. 
is actually able to benefit from that. So, so that's that. Those are the things that drive my everyday interaction. And I would really like. Um, I'm planning. I'm working on trying to build up a story that can develop an instrument or a vehicle that can drive this these initiatives and make sure that all of these aspirations and is these initiatives I have in my head are actually coming to fruition and we can actually get into things that are implementable. So I'm inspired when I am when I work with a group of people, a group of women who are very motivated, who are very driven and trying to build different parts of the industries and making big contributions. This for me means that as we gather together, we try and and, and and find solutions for the general public. We give each other opportunities, we support each other. And that for me then means that whatever that we do, it's there to benefit another woman. I note from your portfolio that you are on a number of boards and have been previously. Let's talk about women occupying seats at the table in terms of board governance. Uh, what would your recommendations be? How do we increase that representation um, across corporates and across companies? That's a very interesting point. And thank you for that question. One of my one of my ethos is that you remain, I know this, we say this quite a lot, but you remain authentic to yourself. You you keep your voice. It's it's one thing to to try to learn the environment. But it's another thing to get to an environment and lose yourself and try to fit in, because then you don't you don't give that very table the benefit of diversity, diverse thinking, the diverse in, uh, um, knowledge and experience that is is so desired by by various boards. The reason why we look at youth, the reason why we look at different genders, people from different backgrounds, different educational backgrounds, it's so that. We can change the thinking. We can improve things. We can improve the environment when you bring in those different, in those diverse, um, the, the diverse um, type of thinking in the room. So women, when we look at women in the room, I think we we tend to to have what we call the imposter syndrome mm. when we get into those environments. And as women, you may not know this, Dr. Andy, but as women, we always have this thing around pull head down syndrome, that when women get into high positions, we don't support each other and all sorts of crazy things. But when you get to that level, then you realize that it's not a lot about not wanting to support the other group. It's more about you yourself having the confidence that you belong there. And if, if you have that imposter syndrome that keeps saying to you, Maybe someone is going to catch me out that I actually don't have the right um, qualification. I don't have the right credentials to be actually sitting on this chair. So when you land on that seat, the first thing I did when I landed my my first board seat, first I didn't have no experience. Someone gave me an opportunity and said, "We need your kind of experience in that board without the board experience itself in the governance experience." But when I got in there. I knew exactly why I was in that room. I knew I knew what experience do I not have, but I focused on the experience that I had. I focused on the contribution that I had to make, the value that I knew I was walking in that room with. I focused on that and I tried to polish and that it made sure that I need to make the difference with what I have. In that process, I tried then to learn, the, navigate myself around how governance works, how board structures work, but I didn't bother myself too much about the things that I didn't know best at the time. I tried to make sure that I add value from the point of view of my own strengths. So I think that's one of the things that we may need to focus on and say that we've got a unique strength that we need to bring into the table. And that is valued. For as long as we try to fit and look like the other gender or look like the other professional, it means that we're not, we're not adding value. We're not I mean, men will not benefit from our uniqueness. You know, people from people from the mining industry, for example, they would typically have engineers in their board. But if you have someone who comes from outside the industry, they they tend to benefit from the questions they ask, from their curiosity, from a different point of view that they have about the industry, 
we all have an outside view around everything. If you're not in that space, you all have your view, but it's valuable when that view comes into the room because it makes everyone understand what the perspective of the outside person is about what we are doing and how can we do it better. So that that's my point. That's my view. Nangamzo Maponya, thank you for that view. And on behalf of Sawil Trailblazers, we want to wish you every success with these awards and thank you for joining us this evening.